You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Forgates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich, at the Jacklich Law Group. Welcome to the Big Dog Post Game Show. This one for lacrosse, still at the Xfinity Center, Maryland 1312 at the formerly named Carrier Dome. George Stamos with the goal, one heck of a freshman. Guys, I'll start with Bruce. What'd you say out there? What a game. First of all, we got to admit, the orange is back. There's no question about it. That was an absolutely even game. Could have gone any way. A really close call that took a goal away from Cuse. Maryland got the ball. Cuse seemed discombobulated, Mason. And all of a sudden, a Stamos, a D mini, stayed on the field, which doesn't happen, and fires from what, 18 feet? And beats the goalie. Who put Mark? Will Mark, who had played a great game. Mark played a great game. Uh, McNatty played a great game. The two face-off guys were even a little edge for Weirman. Maryland was down, but they had the pedigree of a champion. They wouldn't give up on the road, and it was one of the best wins they've had since last year at UVA to win it on the road. Uh, Braden, Braden Dirks of four goals. He was miraculous, and uh, after having my heart broke at the basketball game with Maryland's loss, it's an uplifting feeling as Maryland is now 2-0, and and I want to tell you something, 3-0 rather, you can make a case that that's the best win this year in lacrosse. Maryland could rise, but that doesn't matter. Well, let's throw this over to Mason. Go ahead, Mason. He's got a lot of defense and goalie talk probably to throw in here. Yeah, I think that this one cements it. Ajax Zapatello is the best deep hole in the country at this point. Joey Spolina, only a goal and an assist on the night. And the Terps, they're just situationally so prepared to play in the game. And Bruce, I was pointing it out to you with Weirman mainly, Syracuse was bailing on the subs for the Terps there. And at the end, it catches them off guard, just not matching up defensively in transition. Happened a couple of times, Maryland with some good looks, but the issue is still there for the Terps. Who is that third attackman? Is it Maltz? Is it Murphy? Is it Spanos? Ultimately, you cannot have another team's deep short stick team middies going up against your attackman. Bad sign for Maryland, but still, 13 goals, they get the win in overtime, and they have the best three wins in the country right now. Bruce, the, talk about the balance of this offense. The balance is crazy. I mean, right now, Eric Maliver is not scoring. He will, but he's not scoring now. But you look at Spanos, Braden Urksa is the straw. He's the key guy, and Jack Corris on the first midfield. They had it kind of like the six-man rotation there, Mason. They had six guys, but at the end, you had your best shooters in there. You had Kelly. You had Murphy, all right? Kelly just missed. Maliver just missed. Cuse got the ball back. Uh, Leo, is that his name, scored on a great play. Number seven. Right, but he was in the crease, and Nick Red guarded him and did not push him, and that's the way it goes. The Syracuse crowd went crazy, but listen, what a win. I mean, this was, it took Maryland I, I everything they the had. Camera, go let's ahead. Go to both of you. If you were at the game and didn't know everything that you know, would you think that was a goal? It no. could tell. You had to see it. You had to see it. You didn't really know it until you saw that he wasn't pushed. Once you saw that he wasn't pushed, and the field, the call in the field has to be blatantly wrong to be overturned. And you could make a stretch and say he touched them. But you can't say he pushed them. But look, Maryland had two two-minute penalties in the first half. And they cost them a 5-2 to two lead, 5-4 at halftime. And two two-minute penalties only gave up one goal. That was a key part of the game. But Maryland was down by two in the fourth quarter. And I was looking at a doubleheader defeat that was driving me nuts. Right, but, but we do have to throw in the women one. We're going to go to break here with a word from the big dog himself. We'll be back with Mason talking about the defense in a moment. Hey, Rick Jackson. Who's your favorite number one term? Stefan Diggs, DJ Moore. Really? Now, come on, you know, Rakeem Jarrett. It's always been my favorite number one. Hey, Rock Jarrett, who's your number one? The Rick Jacklish Law Group. Why? Awesome trial results, unbelievable customer service, plus you've taken great care of my mom over the last 20 years. Just some of the reasons that the Jacklish Law Group has been voted the number one personal injury trial firm in the entire USA. If you're hurt, call the Big Dogs. 855-BIG-DOG-1. Back here at Xfinity Center, Maryland, or Terp Talk. 
lacrosse post game show. Maryland takes down Syracuse 13 12 in the Carrier Dome. Bruce Terps take it. McNaney great again in the goal. And zap, look, and, and zap, I mean, and zap. I mean, there's yeah, no yeah. question. But we knew that. But listen, Owen Hiltz, this guy Leo, their midfield, they got, they got a powerful offense. The defense had a little trouble when it mattered stopping Maryland. But look, took overtime. It took a, uh, a call. We could have lost the game, but they didn't. They find ways to win, and I love that win because it looked like it wasn't going to happen, but the whole team uh, responded, and when it mattered, Luke Weirman got the face-offs. When, yeah. it, when it really mattered at the end, he came through, but uh, the guy who was facing off for uh, Syracuse, I think his name was Cone, he did a great job. He had Luke on the run early on. Yeah, he did. I mean, and, and that's one of the things that as the season goes on and, and as we've always talked about with Weirman after the year where he was just unstoppable is the film that, that's been gotten on him, the, the in the middle of the game there, just not being able to win it. Maryland wings, wing play when they were man down for long stretches of that first half was poor, just forcing ground ball, Syracuse coming up with them. But in the game, like you said, the situational awareness, the fact that when you think you have this Maryland team beat, they just find another guy comes off the bench, another player makes a big play for them. Continuing just to play with that that fight that Maryland has, and, and they pull it out. I had Jack McDonald on the show last week. We were talking about the schedule. Jack McDonald's the long stick Mitty. And I said, what do you think of the schedule? He said, that's why we come to Maryland. So next week they have Princeton, correct? Yeah. And then uh, in two weeks they go to Notre Dame, the national champion. They come back to play Brown, and then they play UVA. What else can you do? How hard can you make the schedule? And like you and me have talked about, and Wayne too, that you're bound to lose a game or two along the way. You're not going undefeated in this schedule. And I really thought, just with about three minutes left to go, Mason said, we're going to lose both. And I said, we're going to win basketball and lose lacrosse. And we were both wrong with lacrosse. And basketball was just, uh, you know, whatever. But they put a great effort in. But now they're really up against the wall, and I'm sure you talked about it. But uh, that's going to do it, I believe. Maryland, yeah. Princeton next week, 2 o'clock here in the College Park. And uh, it's going to be a great bus ride home from uh, Syracuse if it's not snowing. <laughs> I think it will be either way. Yeah. I, I, I doubt it seems like a great trip. And as you said it, Bruce, Terps continue to roll next week with Princeton. We'll have your coverage here on Terp Talk for that. For Bruce, Mason Viner, Wayne behind the camera. Good night from Xfinity Center.